Do you want to play maybe one of the best racing games of the entire 64-bit generation? Well, I am the Game Collector, and this is Second Opinion Games, and today we do our review of Super Burnout for the Atari Jaguar. Second Opinion Games. Just firing up the first couple seconds of Super Burnout on the Atari Jaguar, and you're immediately gonna notice that the game is freaking beautiful. It's honestly a super scaler, as you can see, but the graphics have bright colors and the animations look well. The road looks perfect with a little dark line in the middle that basically tells you exactly how to take each corner. A map on the screen helping you out for those tight turns and knowing when they're going to come up. And it's a very well made racing game. However, there are a couple of complaints, and one of them comes with two-player mode. Now, two-player mode itself is really good and very welcome. Split screen at that, so two-player at the same time, and you will have a blast playing with friends. Today, I didn't have anyone to play with, but I have played two-player with people before, and it led to some nail-biters. But it's not perfect, and I say this because the line drawn down the middle of the screen, it gives a little bit more room to the bottom screen than it does the top, and therefore gives them an unfair advantage. I know you could refer to the map and say, hey, you know when the corners are coming up just as fast as I do, but it's a visual thing that sort of gives you clues on when the corners and how to take them and you just have a little bit less time to react on the top screen than the bottom screen. That's not my only critique here. You could switch to manual and automatic transmission and the automatic transmission works absolutely fine. Manual transmission to shift gears you have to use the number pad on the bottom and I believe it's four and six on the number pad. Four to shift down and six to shift up. And if you're holding the JAG controller, this is very unnatural. I don't know why you just couldn't press up and down on the D-pad for the same effect. I figure it would have worked a lot better, and taking corners by downshifting would probably be more effective than braking anyway. But maybe the programmer just couldn't figure out how to work that into the game. And my last complaint about this game is the sound effects. Ready? Not that they're bad, it's just that at least one of them's not there. When I take a really tight corner in most racing games, you hear screeching tire sounds, or at least a brake. Not here, it just isn't there, and it makes the game a little bit quieter and tamer because of it. Now how about some of the good things? There's about 14 music tracks in this game, and they're all different and extremely well done. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, that that's probably the most music tracks in any of the Atari Jaguars lineup. And it's among the best at that. Of course, there's also the graphics. It's probably one of the best looking Atari Jaguar games there is. Check out the colors. The road looks perfect. The trees look realistic. And there's some cool day-night effects. Even during one of the races, it actually shifts from day to night in the race. And when it does, your headlights turn on. The uh, enemies also have headlights, and sometimes you can see them even creeping up on the side of your motorcycle, so you kind of know when to slide over a little bit to block them. If they run into the back of your bike, they go flipping off and lose precious time. However, the same goes for you, so be careful of that. That's probably going to be one of your biggest challenges in the game, is avoiding the other bikes. So when you do get in first place, chances are you're going to stay there. And when you get knocked down to 6th or 7th place, it's going to be pretty challenging to work your way back up to the top. Now, if you don't like your game too difficult, you can adjust the drones um, to a bit weaker or... If you like more of a challenge, make it harder. I personally like my driving games beatable, so I make it a little weaker. There is also lots of different bikes to choose from in this game. 
and all of them feel very different and they're very well balanced. Different maps need different bikes to play. But I'm really not a simulation guy, so I put in the code to unlock the Punisher bike, which is by far the best bike in the game, and basically turns this simulation into an arcade style racer. And it did a great job at that, so I myself can have a ton of fun with it, and if you're a simulation guy, don't unlock the bike. Just as simple as that. Also there is a championship mode which is pretty standard in most racing games. Basically, you race through every single map in the game. And this is all customizable in the options menu. You could even pick how many laps you want to do. If you want a much shorter experience, make it two laps for every single race. If you want to take it a bit longer, you can make it eight laps for every single race. The option is up to you. And that's how most driving games should be. Another thing that I don't see here, that I see in a lot of racing games even to this day, is the rubber banding AI. They're smartly programmed and they don't rubber band all over the place, making the game feel unfair if you have a perfect run and still lose, or crash all over the place and still win. The rubber banding AI is just not there. If you lose, it's your fault and that's the sign of a good racing game. The game also saves your top times for each race, and you can put in different initials for each race, and you know who made that awesome run and who you have to beat. On top of it, the announcer sounds super clear. The audio compression here is unbelievably well done, and it's very enjoyable hearing the announcer scream, best lap, and one lap to go. It does have a little bit of an echo to his voice, which just makes it feel a little bit more epic. If you do beat the game, don't expect anything fancy. It's just going to tell you your overall rank and how you did. And congratulations. But what do you really need for one of the best racing games of its generation? It has a nice two-player mode. Sound effects are great, though one is missing. And it is overall a terrifically well-made and fun game. The downside is, because of this, it's pretty expensive and really hard to find. Most collectors already have their copy, so if you don't, it's going to really hurt your wallet to get one for yourself. But I think it's worth the relatively high price, especially because I've seen a lot worse Jaguar games go far cheaper. So definitely pick this one up. But that's just my opinion. Thanks for watching. Final lap. Hey, if you like this video, please subscribe. And if you like the Atari Jaguar, I'm working my way through every single one of them. I probably have only about six more to go, so I'm really making my way through. Also, if you have some questions, please leave me a comment. And if you like the video, also leave me a comment. In the future, I have a lot of questions myself, and hopefully you guys out there in the community can answer them. But that's all for now, and thanks again, guys.